Shelley Duvall was an American actress who had a net worth of $5 million. She carved a unique path in Hollywood. Known for her portrayals of quirky and captivating characters, she left a lasting impression on audiences. Her talent was recognized with prestigious awards, including a Cannes Film Festival Award and a Peabody Award. Shelley Duvall's life began in Fort Worth, Texas on July 7, 1949. The eldest of four children, she was the daughter of Bobby Ruth Crawford, a real estate broker, and Robert Richardson Bobby Duvall, a cattle auctioneer who later became a lawyer. Important to note he was not related to actor Robert Duvall. Her father's work meant frequent moves during her early years before the family finally settled in Houston when Shelley was five. Duvall's childhood was a blend of artistic energy and scientific curiosity. Earning the nickname Manic Mouse for her boundless energy, she also harbored a fascination with science, even aiming to become a scientist as a teenager. After graduating from Waltrip High School in 1967, Shelley's path took a surprising turn. She traded textbooks for cosmetics, taking a job at Foley's department store. Next came South Texas Junior College, where she pursued a degree in nutrition and diet therapy. Little did anyone know, a completely different career path awaited Shelley Duvall. In 1970, Shelley Duvall married artist Bernard Sampson. However, their marriage struggled as her acting career flourished, ultimately leading to divorce in 1974. While filming Annie Hall in New York a few years later, Duvall met singer-songwriter Paul Simon. A romance blossomed, but it wasn't meant to be. Ironically, their relationship ended when Duvall introduced Simon to her friend, actress Carrie Fisher, who became his next partner. Duvall found love again in 1989 with musician Dan Gilroy, former lead vocalist of the band Breakfast Club. They met while co-starring in the Disney Channel's Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme, a project Duvall also produced. This relationship would endure for the rest of her life. The 1994 Northridge earthquake prompted a significant life change for Duvall. She relocated from her Los Angeles home to Blanco, Texas, closer to her roots. She had decided to move back to Texas while filming there for The Underneath in 1994. In 2002, after a successful 32-year acting career, Duvall chose to retire from the spotlight. While fate often plays a role in success stories, Shelley Duvall's career took flight thanks to a serendipitous meeting. Around 1970, she was at a party where director Robert Altman, then filming Brewster McCloud in Texas, was present. Duvall's positive energy and unique appearance captivated several crew members who saw potential in her and urged her to join the film. Despite initial hesitation, Duvall eventually agreed, stating, I got tired of arguing and thought maybe I'm an actress. They told me to come. I simply got on a plane and did it. I was swept away. This chance encounter marked a turning point for Duvall. Having never ventured outside of Texas before, she was on a plane to Hollywood, ready to embrace her first film role. In Brewster McCloud, she played the free-spirited love interest opposite Bud Court's reclusive protagonist. Impressed by her performance, Altman continued to cast Duvall in his subsequent projects. She portrayed an unsatisfied mail-order bride in McCabe and Mrs. Miller in 1971, and the daughter of a convict in Thieves Like Us in 1974, where her character becomes romantically involved with Keith Carradine. The year 1975 saw Duvall land a role in Altman's critically acclaimed ensemble comedy Nashville. Playing a spaced-out groupie, she contributed to the film's success. She continued to showcase her versatility with a role in Buffalo Bill and the Indians, or Sitting Bull's History Lesson in 1976, portraying a sympathetic woman of the Wild West. That same year, Duvall ventured beyond Altman's films. She took on the lead role of Bernice, a wealthy Wisconsin socialite, in a PBS adaptation of F. Scott Fitzgerald's Bernice Bobs Her Hair in 1976. This period also saw her delve into television, hosting an episode of Saturday Night Live and appearing in several sketches. Critical breakthrough and demanding roles from 1977 to 1980. 1977 was a pivotal year for Shelley Duvall. She landed the lead role of Mildred Millie Lamoureux in Robert Altman's enigmatic thriller, Three Women. Set in a desolate California town, the film explored complex themes and featured significant improvisation from the actors, including Duvall. While not a commercial blockbuster, Three Women garnered critical acclaim, with Duvall's performance receiving particular praise. 
Texas Monthly critics lauded her as extraordinary, and her talent was recognized with the Best Actress Award at Cannes and a BAFTA nomination. She also appeared in a supporting role in Woody Allen's iconic Annie Hall that same year. Duvall's next project, however, would be a physically and emotionally demanding one. She was cast as Wendy Torrance in Stanley Kubrick's chilling masterpiece, The Shining, in 1980. While co-star Jack Nicholson described working with Kubrick as positive, Duvall's experience was markedly different. Kubrick's meticulous nature resulted in a year-long shoot, with the script constantly evolving. The demanding nature extended to the actors with Kubrick known to use antagonistic tactics. Frequent clashes arose between Kubrick and Duvall, with the director intentionally isolating her at times. The now iconic baseball bat scene stands as a testament to the film's intensity, requiring Duvall to perform it a grueling 127 times. The toll was evident. Duvall presented Kubrick with clumps of hair she'd lost due to the extreme stress. The emotional demands were equally taxing, with Duvall reportedly crying for hours on end during the last nine months of filming. In a later interview with Roger Ebert, Duvall acknowledged the film's challenging nature stating it was almost unbearable but also acknowledging its artistic merit. Shelley Duvall, A Legacy Beyond the Shining from 1977 to 1991. Shelley Duvall's career continued to flourish in the late 1970s and throughout the 1980s. Her portrayal of Mildred Lamoureux in Three Women in 1977 garnered critical acclaim, including the Best Actress Award at Cannes. That same year, she took on a supporting role in Woody Allen's Annie Hall. However, it was her performance as Wendy Torrance in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining in 1980 that left an indelible mark. While critically praised for her portrayal of a wife grappling with her husband's descent into madness, the filming process itself was notoriously demanding. Recent re-evaluations have acknowledged the impact of Kubrick's directing style on Duvall's performance, with the Razzie Committee rescinding her nomination for Worst Actress in 2022. Despite the challenges, Duvall's talent shone through. She seamlessly transitioned to playing the spunky olive oil in Robert Altman's live-action Popeye in 1980, a role critics hailed as perfect for her. Her versatility continued to impress. She starred in Terry Gilliam's fantastical Time Bandits in 1981 and lent her voice to the short film Frankenweenie in 1984 by Tim Burton. Beyond acting, Duvall made significant contributions to children's television. She hosted, narrated, and executive produced the beloved fairy tale theater from 1982 to 1987 followed by Tall Tales and Legends from 1985 to 1987, which earned her an Emmy nomination. Duvall's entrepreneurial spirit led her to found Think Entertainment, a production company that created nightmare classics in 1989 for Showtime. This anthology series showcased her continued interest in darker narratives. The 1990s saw Duvall in diverse roles, including a part in the action-adventure film Suburban Commando in 1991 and a guest appearance on the legal drama L.A. Law in 1992. She even released children's music CDs featuring lullabies and Christmas songs. Shelley Duvall, Embracing Diverse Roles, 1990s to 2022. The 1990s saw Shelley Duvall's career flourish across various genres. In 1990, she brought the nursery rhyme character, Little Bo Peep, to life in Mother Goose Rock and Rhyme. Building on her success with children's programming, Duvall's Think Entertainment partnered with Universal Family Entertainment. The result? Shelley Duvall's Bedtime Stories in 1992, an Emmy-nominated series featuring animated adaptations of children's books with celebrity narrators. She produced another series for Showtime, Mrs. Piggle Wiggle, before retiring from producing in 1993. Duvall's talent extended beyond children's entertainment. She showcased her dramatic range in Jane Campion's 1996 adaptation of The Portrait of a Lady, portraying the Countess Gemini. The following year, she took on contrasting roles, a beatific nun in Changing Habits, and a murderous ostrich farm owner in Twilight of the Ice Nymphs. Her filmography throughout the late 1990s remained diverse. She appeared in comedies like Home Fries and horror films like Tale of the Mummy in 1998. The new millennium saw Duvall in smaller roles, including parts in independent films and a Disney Channel project that ultimately remained unreleased. In 2002, after Manna from Heaven, Duvall stepped away from acting in public life for an extended period. To the delight of fans, a surprise return was announced in 2022. 
Duvall joined the cast of The Forest Hills, an independent horror thriller film, marking her first acting project in over two decades. Shelley Duvall, Beyond the Headlines, 2016 to 2024. In 2016, Shelley Duvall appeared on The Dr. Phil Show. While the interview intended to discuss her career, public perception focused on her mental well-being. Many viewers felt the segment exploited Duvall, sparking outrage and criticism. Director Stanley Kubrick's daughter, Vivian Kubrick, even used social media to express her disapproval. Despite the controversy, the episode led to positive developments. Director Lee Unkrich, upon seeing it, managed to connect with Duvall in 2018. Their friendship blossomed, and Unkrich confirmed that Duvall remained proud of her accomplishments. Seeking to offer a more nuanced perspective, journalist Seth Abramovich found Duvall for an interview in 2021. He aimed to correct the narrative shaped by the Dr. Phil episode. The resulting article highlighted Duvall's sharp memory and engaging stories. While discussing The Shining, Duvall acknowledged the emotional intensity of playing Wendy Torrance and the demanding filming schedule. However, she also emphasized director Stanley Kubrick's warmth towards her. Actress Angelica Houston, then partner of Jack Nicholson, further corroborated Duvall's dedication to the role. Death. On July 11, 2024, Duvall died in her sleep at home in Blanco, Texas, due to complications of diabetes at the age of 75. Thank you for watching. For more in-depth analysis of content like this, subscribe and click on the bell notification.